Hi. Last class we saw how um, the torsion values are represented by using the right hand rule. Of course, I have a bunch, whole bunch of right hands here because we want to we want to see how that affects the uh, the way in which materials respond in torsion. So the example that I'm going to do is this shaft. Of course, this is complete make believe problem. So let's not even think about reality of it. But just to illustrate the purpose. So we have a shaft in which there are different kinds of torques that are applied. And what we want to find out is which portion of the shaft uh, is there the uh, maximum shear stress and where does it occur. For this, what we need to do is the following. Um, we need to find to use equilibrium to obtain torque and the material response constitutive the theory to find stress. And from this last part, we know that the stress is TR over J. For circular shafts, we can even write this in a very convenient form because it is T D over 2 divided by pi d to the fourth over 32. So this will turn out to be 16 t over pi d cubed. This is the maximum torque which is on the outside surface. Okay. So this is a very useful one to remember. Now in order to do this first thing I am going to do is I am going to draw side view. So here is the shaft in the side view. I'm drawn fairly large so that we have enough space. So this point is A and there is a and there is a disc here. There is the point B and there is another disc there. And then there is a point C and there is another disc there. And this is the wall. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is point A. This is point B. This is point C. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to figure out how this thing A, B, C. So I am going to draw my length axis like this. So and as usual, instead of calling it X, I am going to call it L. Right. And what I want to do is first represent the external forces, the external forces. So let us make sure that I am able to show you what they are so that we do not have to constantly go. Yeah, there you go. So the external forces are this guy, that guy and that guy and we have to figure out which one is positive and which one is negative. Okay. In our version, remember that the way in which we decide some whether something is positive or negative is by drawing the right hand, uh, right hand screw uh, rule. So what I am going to do is I am going to look at this. Look at the first one. My axis is like that. So I put my thumb along the axis and I ask myself which way it should go. And sure enough, it should go like this. So I'll show you what I mean. It should be like this. Can you see that? And our notation is this is plus so clockwise, I mean counterclockwise is positive. So plus 48 Newton meters. The next one is negative. And let's see. I'm going to find a negative one. There you go. So I'm going to grab that. Let's see if I can grab it. So I'm going to grab one of these negative ones. I'm going to plonk it up there. Yeah, that's negative. And the last one is also negative. The first one is a positive one. So I'm going to put it on top there. So you can see that's the external ones. Can you see that? So this will be called minus minus 144 Newton meters. And this will be called minus 60 Newton meters. 
because of the way in which they are they are looking can you see this tells me the magnitude that's the direction uh, magnitude direction now in order to find the torque in each region i have to make a free body diagram so what i'm going to do is the following i'm going to cut it so if i cut it i'm going to cut let's see i'm going to cut it here and i'm going to draw both sides of this so the first part looks like that right and i have a plus 48 newton meters the remaining portion looks like this this will be called minus 60 this will be called minus 144 So now when I cut it I will expose equal and opposite torques so how do I do that I'm going to put two of my little things out there so one let's go that way and the other one will be opposite I'm deliberately showing this so that we are very clear. That's the torque on the surface, and this torque, I'm going to call it as T A B. This torque will be called T A B. How come it's not equal and opposite? Heck, you know, our nice thing is the. sense that we have used automatically takes care of it okay so you don't have to flip the signs you know they are automatically taken care of this is a very important point so please pay attention here now let's compute tab that's easy i'm going to look at this free body diagram and i will say plus 48 minus sorry plus tab equal to 0 how come i got plus tab notice that my axis is this way so this coincides with the axis so it's plus this is plus because it also coincides with the axis can you see that it also coincides with the axis so that's also plus so i got tab is minus 48 okay that was easy so what it means is that it's not going counter clockwise the way in which we are it's going clockwise we don't care we will just leave the number as it is remember when we did tension and compression we didn't change the sign we i mean we didn't change the arrow we just always pretend it was tension and chose negative numbers it's exactly the same way okay clockwise versus counter clockwise so now now let's look at the next piece i am going to cut now this piece here when i cut that piece i'm going to draw it the remaining piece is here i have this and that was uh, minus 144 the reason is because the shaft direction was negative so i'm going to take that and i'm going to drag it all the way down come on come on come on let's snap that one there the magnitude here was minus 48 that i'm getting from here right and i'm going to say the magnitude here is 144 and the direction was this way again I want you to notice something. When I draw this, when I wrote here minus one forty four, notice I didn't give the arrow because the arrow is implied. So when I write like this, come on, come on. When I write like this, without any arrows, that means I am actually using our natural sign convention, which says positive numbers are clockwise, negative numbers are counterclockwise. The only thing is. 
for internal talks i have to be careful okay so i always put the number whatever i get i always count it so that this time i'm not i will just always count uh, face it the same way okay then on this side i'm going to have another one there this is tbc so this will give me minus minus 48 minus 144 plus tbc equal to 0 which implies tbc equals 144 minus 48 which is 96 newton meters notice the sign so that says tbc is 96 newton meters going counter clockwise like that can you see that's the thing so that's what will show up here so this is tbc i'm putting a double arrow to show it's a it's a it's a torque and i'm going to put the value tbc here so i got 96 so that's 96 then i look at the last piece remember there was something going up here um, so i'm going to do this time without putting any Uh, fingers but just directly using the numbers you will see how that works so my last piece is this i'm going to cut it here so here is the and i got i'm going to put a double to show that it's a torque and the torque here was 96 and then here it is minus 60 the torque at this point and then here it is this way t c d so i will get minus 96 minus 60 equal to t c d which turns out to be minus sorry plus t c d equal to 0 which will turn out to be t c d equals 156 So on this phase, I have 156. So you understand how this thing works? Newton meters. Understand how this thing works? So in the last figure is what I want to pay. I want you to pay attention because that's where I didn't use any thumbs and things like that. So first thing, this itself tells me because I'm always going to go counterclockwise. The only times when I actually show the arrows are here, because I want to count it right. Because faces are different. That's what I meant. Okay. Thank you very much.